Hello, Namibia. Welcome to your daily lunchtime show where we catch up on current events and headlines. My name is Priska Nyolo and you are watching NMH at 1. Since late yesterday, five new cases of COVID-19 have been confirmed in Namibia. This brings total positive cases in the country to 39, of which 19 individuals have recovered. The total number of persons thus far quarantined for 14 days edged closer to 3,000 by Tuesday. Official data showed 44 new individuals entered quarantine on 16 June, while only 17 were discharged. The largest new group, comprising of 30 individuals, started their quarantine in Commerce Region. On Tuesday, 69 possible contacts of confirmed cases were traced. In the vast Kwa Jagwa Conservancy consultations, sorry so much for the pronunciation, with Sun communities continue on development issues they face. This photograph pictures a meeting held at Khrasuk. These meetings were previously put on hold due to lockdown measures. Various events took place in Vintuk yesterday where initiatives to assist in managing the impact and the prevention of COVID-19 were made public. The Namibia Training Authority, NTA, yesterday announced assistance to employers to mitigate the economic impact of COVID-19. Philippus Usiku of Market Watch attended the announcement. Namibian businesses operating in an already depressed and contracting economy as a further response to the visible and adverse impact on the economic sector, the Namibia Training Authority, or NTA, as an enterprise of government under the auspices of the Ministry of Higher Education, Technology and Innovation, would like to announce the following. Subject to finalization of the requisite statutory processes, currently with the Office of the Attorney General, I'm pleased to announce that registered employers will not be required to pay the vocational education and training of that lady for a period of two months. That is for July and August 2020. This payment break follows a recommendation in this regard by the NTA board to the Minister of Higher Education, Technology and Innovation and the Minister of Finance, who, in accordance with provisions of the VET Act, or Act 1 of 2008, with both ministers acceding to this request recently. The reprieve will amount to a reduction of $65 million in projected income from the collection of levies for the current financial year, this, this is 2020-21. This reduction, we would like to assure our partners and stakeholders, will not impact the ongoing implementation of strategic initiatives uh, pertaining to transformation and expansion of the TVET sector adversely, nor will it affect the sustainability of the VET levy program in general. The NTA and our line ministry, that's Higher Education, Technology and Innovation, trust that this measure will reduce some of the pressure that continues to accumulate and, on levy paying employers and their already constrained cash flows. B2 Gold Namibia formalized their assistance, totaling 40 million Namibian dollars. Claudia Reiter spoke to Managing Director Mark Dava. Uh, 
This donation is uh, $34 million, million towards the COVID-19 relief efforts for the government of the Prime Minister. And that's on top of the $6 million, million we've already given. So we gave out two checks this morning of a um, total of $40 million, million that's 6 plus 34. And uh, that's all towards the COVID-19 relief efforts. The initial six we have already been uh, spending since April. And we've been putting in latrines in the informal uh, it's a squatter camp development areas throughout the country, especially in Winter and Rochas and Jim, Batavi, Ochiranga and places like that. So that's made a huge difference. And the thirty-four million million dollars will go directly towards the Prime Minister's Fund, which is the National Disaster Relief Fund for COVID nineteen. And it'll be spent as they see fit. We saw that the governance processes with that fund are sufficient to satisfy our board of directors as well as the, the stock exchangers, the investors in India. Also yesterday in Vintuk, Namib Poultry handed over 50 mechanical Also yesterday in Vintuk, Namib Poultry handed over 50 mechanical hand sanitizer units worth $35,000 Namibian dollars to schools in the Commerce and Hardab region. A total number of 26 schools in Commerce and 24 in Hardab will, through this donation, be equipped with or be equipped to promote good hygiene. Justicia Shipena captured this moment. The World Health Organization suggests that one way to prevent the spread of the coronavirus is by washing the hands thoroughly with soap and water. In the absence of soap and water, a good um, alcohol-based solution, hand sanitizer, will do. And these hand sanitizers are mechanical, they are food powered. So they do not require learners to handle the, the, the machines with their hands therefore also reducing the contact area of students as in, in, in the classrooms as well, which we thought would be a very, very good uh, advantage for the Ministry of, of, of Education. We are grateful and really moved by this donation because you know regions like Arta are those ones that are called <coughs> vulnerable. You know, uh, a big number of our learners and parents are from the really below the income status, so to say. So is the income in the school is not really as big as you may compare with uh, other regions, not mentioning commerce. But I'm here to give you the 12 schools that will benefit. Uh, in Hartab we have three circuits and we have at least taken four schools from each circuit. Mm -hmm. So AWAP, which is the Mariental circuit, um, the following four schools will benefit. Embelheim, and Mutwana, PJ Taita, and Jaya Kim primary school. Mm -hmm. In Naupu circuit is Anna Mastro, <coughs> Clean Aup Resource School, mm -hmm. uh, VWM George in Kribion, mm -hmm. and the Kakran primary school. Mm -hmm. And in uh, one of circuit, which is the Robot circuit, is Petrus Fris primary school, 
Prun Drive Primary School, J and W Morton Primary School, and the last one, number 12, is Vetco Primary School. I, when I'm driving from here today, I will have the privilege to stop over and uh, put a smile on their face. And I was uh, listed 13 schools, and from what was now communicated, it's uh, 26 devices that we will be getting. These were the schools that we sent through uh, for uh, being recipients of the hand sanitizers. It's Baumgart's Brun Primary School, Ari's Primary School, Groot Oak Primary School, Groot Oak Secondary School, Kwakwa's Primary School, Lokrans Primary School, Dordabo's Primary School, Nicholas Whitburn Memorial Primary School. Those are all the farm schools that Comas have. Mm -hmm. uh, there is need to dispel some myths. In Comas, we have the whole spectrum. It's like this. Mm -hmm. uh, Well-resourced schools and very under-resourced schools. Mm -hmm. So that is the balance we try to strike. And then there is schools that is in Wintook Urban, but on the periphery of the city of Wintook. <coughs> From where we are standing, it's uh, basically the, the north western corner of the town. It's on the edge of the urban area, but services mostly learners from informal settlements. So the, the schools that will benefit are Ochimuse Primary School, Havana Primary School, Monte Cristo Project Primary School, mm -hmm. Dr. Avram Yambo Primary School, mm -hmm. and Greenleaves Primary School. They are on the edge of town, serving the informal settlements. So the, the gift or the donation is, is most uh, appreciated because it will serve also the bulk of the primary school population. In, in that area. On the front pages of Namibia's daily newspapers, the alleged criminal ties of, Namibian, of a Namibian man who entered the country illegally from South Africa and then tested positive for the coronavirus is a story full of twists and turns. You can read the detail in the lead story of today's issue of the Namibian Sun. The Namibian questions approval for a flight from abroad to take Russian billionaire Rashid Sadarov what out of the country. While Republican takes a look at infighting and alleged squandering of money by the council and management of the city of Vintuk. The weekly confidante also zooms in on power struggles in the politics of the Namibian capital. New Era reports on new benefits agreed on for the leader of the official opposition in parliament. The Algemeine Zeitung's lead story reports on a civil lawsuit of 18 million Namibian dollars by a businessman from Tumeb against a mining company. Inside the dailies, the business, finance and economic section of NMH's papers, Market Watch, leads with the lowering of interest rates and the Bank of Namibia's demand to banks to prove to provide data of their assistance to clients due to the COVID-19 pandemic. After a lengthy suspension with full pay, the CEO of the Okahanja Town Council is set to return to work, according to the Namibian Sun. New Era reports that the court case about 23 million Namibian dollars lost of sponsorship for the Cora African Music Awards, which never took place, will start in September this year. Learners in the lockdown Irongo region, some of them, some of them resident, other regions are eager to return to school as soon as possible, according to the Namibian. Algemeine Zeitung tells how a new solar-powered water pumping station can help curb conflict between humans and elephants in the Kunene and Irongo regions. 
Republicans share the story of an entrepreneur in Luderitz who had rolls the country's own unique cigars. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Priska Agnolo and us at the NMH family wish you nothing but a great Thursday ahead. But do keep in mind that we do have the homework uh, for the grade 6 and 7 classes for maths, science and English. Next up is the weather. Do enjoy.